Hi, everybody. This is Haynes. Uh, this is for Intro Engineering Design. Um, one announcement is they have said, you know, we're going to be virtual learning for the 15th and 16th here, February 15th and 16th, Monday and Tuesday. Um, so uh, this is this is just for my virtual students because I know I haven't put this lecture online yet. And it's for anybody in my in-person classes who have not done this yet. Maybe you were absent or you came really late and didn't get to do this or whatever other reason you missed doing this physical assignment. Um, you can do this version here. It's the same thing. All right. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what's uploaded with this. There's this document here. Um, it doesn't have these notes in it right here. I've, I've uploaded a clean blank version. And I'm going to hopefully remember to upload a document. It's a Word document as well. So if you want to type yours up, you can. Um, but if if you want to print it out and write it by hand, that's perfectly fine. If you have a printer or if you don't have a printer and still want to write it by hand, just grab some regular paper, notebook paper, and write down like product name, company name, purpose, and then give yourself room for three columns going down. One's for input, one's for your product function, and one for output. Three across. I'm treating it like I'm talking to someone in class, so your your left is my right. So hopefully it flips my, uh, my camera around so it makes more sense. Um, so if you want to take a moment right now, go find you, uh, your notebook paper to write on, or if you want to print off a version of this, take notes on, that's absolutely great. Take a second, pause me and, uh, come on back. All right. So what I've uploaded is a black box systems model worksheet for functional analysis. The black box systems model is kind of, a it's kind of a way to sort of organize your thoughts about how a system works, how a device or product is going to work. If you treat it like a system, you think about what comes into the system, you think about what happens within the system, and then you think about what comes out of the system at the end. And a system is just a collection of parts, features, programming, whatever is in there that just makes it have it's, makes it do its function, makes it work, makes it do what it's supposed to do. Um, when we talk about like your circulatory system, that is a system. Your blood system, your blood supply in your body is a system. Uh, it takes in nutrients and everything. It transports the heart, the heart pumps and transports all around. And then there's waste products that come out through the circulatory system and get transported to other body systems. That's how, that's how it goes. So uh, let's talk about a product. The product I usually talk about is my uh, handy dandy water kettle heater thing here. It's Farberware. I got it at Walmart. It's pretty cheap. I was going to use it to warm up water. Um, so I could put it in my carpet cleaner and actually clean that carpet in that room because it didn't get cleaned before the year started and I wasn't about to like rent a rug doctor. That's really expensive, but I do have a carpet cleaner. Um, I just need a way to get the water hot enough to, to properly clean the carpets. So um, <laughs> I was hoping to start this week in the afternoons, but it, it's not going to be till Wednesday at earliest, I guess. Um, this is called the cordless, a stainless steel cordless electric kettle. It's by Farberware. It is... Um, it's basically a two-piece thing. It's got this base that plugs into the wall, and it's got this central column here, and there's a ring around it there, and it's got a, a contact inside of there, and it's got a metal contact, so you can't see it in this photo, but it's on the back side and the outside of that column. And so you can set that kettle down on it, and you can set it any direction, like the handle doesn't have to face a certain way for it to work. It makes contact no matter where, as long as you set it on that center column. And uh, that completes the circuit. The electricity flows through it, up into the kettle, and out again. And my best guess is there's a resistor of some sort. That's that's all a heating element on, a, on an electric stove is, is there's a resistor in there. It sends electricity through. The resistor, the material, resists the flow of electricity. And so the power that's being lost because it's resisting the flow of electricity turns into heat, dissipates heat, and it heats your water, um, in this case. Uh, there's a button over here. This is the on off switch. You can push it down to turn it on. You can push it up to turn it off, but there is also inside somewhere a sensor that tells it when it gets to a certain temperature, it cuts off. And we've tested the water right after it cuts off. I try to get it as quick as I can and test the water, um, with my, my temperature probe, my little thermometer I've got attached to the multimeter. And it says it's 213 to 214 degrees Fahrenheit, which is just above the boiling point of water. So it gets it up to that boiling point of water, cuts off. Uh, it's got a button here you can use to open up the top of it. Um, when uh, when you're ready, you can pour it out of here. It, it's it's pretty simple and straightforward. There's not a lot to it. It's not complicated. Um, but I can make it complicated. I'm just trying not to make it too complicated for you. So this is my electric kettle. 
That's the product name. I have a student who decided to write stainless steel cordless electric kettle. It's your prerogative. The brand is Farberware. And the purpose is to boil water. It boils water. That's what it does. Theoretically, I could boil other liquids with a similar boiling point, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to put water in it. So you think about your inputs, and you, to make sure you've got all your inputs, I sort of have these categories of inputs to think about. Uh, first thing you think about is where, what kind of energy is coming into it. So in the case of my electric kettle, electricity is coming into it. Now, if you have something like a gas stove, you might have gas also going into it as an input for energy. Um, you know, it, it burns the gas and the stovetop has flames coming up. I don't know who has a gas stove and who doesn't, but gas might be an option for someone doing their, their stove or their oven uh, as, an ex as, as your example. All right. Uh, but for my example, electricity, that's all that goes in there is energy. Um, if you had a windmill, it'd be wind power, you know. Think about how the energy gets into the system. Number two, user inputs. Most of our devices have some sort of user input, they, even if it's just an on and off switch, which is all mine has. On, off, button. That's the user control. So what kind of user controls are there? If you've got a more complicated device, it might have a lot of buttons. It might have the lever you push down on your toaster. It's got a dial. It's got buttons. It's got everything on it almost. Um, your stove might have dials you turn and buttons you push. Um, there might be a touch screen where you push just the location, and that's what the button is. It's the location on the touch screen. You know, whatever your, your input is. Um, I added sensors recently. So what kind of sensors does your device have? Is there any sort of feedback it gets from what it's doing or the surroundings to change what it's doing? And in the case of my kettle, there is a thermometer. That's the only way it would know to turn off when it's at the right temperature. So there's some sort of thermometer, and that is a, a sensor and feedback that makes it auto off. I'm just putting in parentheses so you know why I put it there. And then, of course, the other category to think about is what sort of materials are there? that go into it. What items, what physical stuff goes into it. Um, in this case, all I'm putting in is water. You might have something where you have to put more than just water into it. You might have something that takes, like your oven, you're going to take food, goes, you just food, you don't have to put all kinds of food, but just food goes in. Um, whatever material goes into it. You might put dirty dishes in. You might put the dish detergent in. You might put dish... Um, like the finishing stuff that makes it not dry with spots on it. There's a word for that. Anyways, what do you put into it? It includes the physical stuff, it includes the energy that goes in, it includes any sort of signals you put in through sensors or for user input. And that's that. Uh, next you think about what it does. And like I said, all it really does is when the button is pushed, when the, when the, when the switch is turned on, it the kettle heats up. That's pretty basic. I can go a little bit further and I can say, well, I know that um, I know that the kettle does the kettle turns electric energy into heat and uses and, and heats the water up. I don't want to get too much. That's too much. If I, I can get so in depth that I really don't want to, so I'm trying to rein it in. Um, you can get as in-depth as you want to. If you want to go more than that, you can. If you want to do some research and figure out more about how your product works, go for it. I'm not going to stop you. Um, and I know that when the switch is turned off or the thermometer reads the temperature above 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Spelled it right. It did not give me a red squiggle. Um, the kettle turns off. It turns on and heats up, it turns off. That's all it does. You might have something where um, it has a, it has something like the, the dishwasher or the washing machine is going to have some pump that pumps water in or pumps water out. You know, pumps clean water in, gets dirty water out. Some system like that inside of it. All right, outputs. I don't like the order I put these in, but um, these are just some categories. So you think about how energy might be lost out of the system. You think about the signals the machine gives off. You think about intentional products. For example, in my case, I like to start at the intended products. I should have put that as number one. The intended product is boiled water. And then any incidental byproduct or waste that comes out of that system. So boiled water is what I need to come out of there. Um, but I also know there's some signals the machine gives off. When I turn it on, 
the light turns blue. So we have a light that turns on. Um, some energy is lost through sound. There's some sound that comes out of it. It doesn't have like a ding like a microwave. It doesn't sing d like my washing machine does. Da, 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 da. It does it every time and it's, it's kind of adorable, but I've heard it about 4,000 times now. Um, so uh, it has sound. There is a click when you push a button up and down, and there's also like the boiling water makes sound. It's not really a function necessarily of the item, but it's just something that happens because the water's boiling. It's going to bubble. Uh, it gives off heat. That's really what it's producing, and that's why the water gets hot to boiling, is it's, it's putting heat into the, into the water. Um, it also, like, if you put your hands around the outside of it, you can feel heat radiating out of it, so it loses some heat in the process. It's not 100% efficient, but it's good enough. Um, the only other thing that I that we've observed coming out of that is steam. Steam comes out the top. And I was mad at first that it didn't have like a whistle. I was like, oh man, how am I going to know it's done? It clicks itself off when done. I don't even have to worry about it. Um, the kettle on your stove has like a little tiny opening. So when it gets hot enough and steam builds up enough pressure inside, it starts shooting out at a high enough speed that it whistles. And, uh, and steam itself is dangerous. I'm kind of glad now that it doesn't have that because if it had like a hot jet of steam come out of it, that could be dangerous. I don't necessarily trust all the students around to not goof off next to something that could be spitting out hot steam. So I'm glad it just sort of floats out. Um, there's probably more, like, if I really wanted to overthink it, I could go into, does it have any electromagnetic radiation that comes out of it? Eh, probably. Um, but I don't need to overthink it. That's plenty of information for the purposes of this assignment. Um, I'm going to say, for you guys, pick another kitchen appliance, preferably. Uh, your oven, your dishwasher, the fridge, a deep freeze, the bread machine, the blender, the uh, air fryer, um, microwave, incinerator, if you got, I, you know, um, yeah, like an appliance, uh, maybe a vacuum, maybe your washing machine, maybe your dryer. Um, an appliance is good because it has like a limited function that it does. And, uh, and, um, it's much better than some some people wanted to do their phone or their laptop and the problem with doing an electric device is let's see example laptop example i did an example of the phone and doing these examples lengthens my lecture considerably because i overthink everything but i mean look at all the different purposes you can think of for a phone i mean i've got apps i've got email i can do phone calls zoom i can take photos videos i can go on internet and social media i can play games Similar things with the laptop. There is so much. There's more I could have done. I mean, you know, the inputs, you've got electricity, obviously, but there's also a keyboard, there's a trackpad, there's peripherals, like you can have a mouse plugged in, there's digital data, you can have data um, coming in from the internet wirelessly, you can have data coming from a flash drive, you can have uh, your webcams getting data in, the microphones getting data in, you can have air input because there's a fan down there it's got to suck in air so it can cool itself off you got an sd card port. there's tons of things going on don't complicate your life that's too much i even got tired when I, this is the second one i did that was complicated and i was like you know what that's i don't want to go through all the product functions of a laptop or a cell phone that's a lot of stuff it's a lot of electrical engineering stuff computer engineering stuff programming that's too complicated keep it simple pick something that is, look at all that. Ah, I just lifted stuff under the functions of the phone. There's so many things your phone does. It's complicated. I could go much more in depth with something like this because there's only a couple things it does. So pick something in your kitchen, your coffee machine, um, anything like that, something like that that is, that you kind of know from experience how it works. Okay? Tell me what it is up here on the top line. Tell me what company it is. Tell me what its main functions are. And then go through and you can use this information here. Make sure you've got that somewhere. So you can make sure you've got kind of all the types of inputs and all the types of outputs. Okay. Uh, this paper has this notes page down here. I would have put those notes down under the notes, but I didn't want to be scrolling up and down. So you don't need this stuff here written down in inputs and outputs. You can just use it, fill it up with your inputs and outputs. Okay. Um, upload either your version of this Word document, if you type something in like I did, or a photo of what you're uh, working with, like your, your, your picture or a scan of the printed out version that you handwritten on, or the notebook page that you used to write it out. Okay, that is all we need.
Let me know if you have any questions. Again, I'm going to be on Zoom officially from 9 to 11 on Monday the 15th. As long as I got power and internet, I will do Zoom at that time, and I can do Zoom again later on in the day or on Thursday or Tuesday if you guys need me then. All right? So keep in touch. Let me know how it's going. Um, Y'all take care. All right? Bye-bye. Oh, stay warm. Please stay warm. It's going to get so cold. <laughs>